Today we're going to discuss how you can make an interesting animated pattern with Adobe Director using only a few lines of lingo and some very very basic artwork. So the idea here is that we're going to use one of these pieces of artwork. You could use any of them you wanted. You can make any artwork you like and you're going to lay it out on the screen in an arrangement of maybe 20 items depending on how large the artwork is and you can arrange these any way you like on the screen we're going to keep this kind of simple and just use this box piece of artwork which was generated inside director using the vector shape editor you go to vector shape you can create all kinds of very simple vector based artwork that have gradient fills, solid fills, no fills you can do whatever you want with your artwork and you can even paste in a bitmap artwork it doesn't matter what kind of art this is but what we're going to do is arrange it so we have in this case about five across and four vertically laid out so what I'll do is lay these out so I have about 20 copies and to do that I'm going to hold down the option key I'm going to drag then I'll click on the frontmost this highest number channel sprite and I'll nudge that over a little bit. I'm not going to even worry about the spacing too much at this point because we'll use the align tools to get that to look right. So I'll hold down option again and I'll go back to here and shift nudge these over a little bit. I'm holding the shift key with the arrow keys because that way you get 10 pixels of movement per arrow click. Then I'll just make another copy of this one and I'll nudge it over a little bit. So in order to get the best spacing between the sprites for your artwork, the easiest thing to do is use the Align tool, which is down in your window menu under Align. You can bring that up or you can use the Command or, or Apple K shortcut to bring that up. And what we'll do is first place these across the screen at the extent horizontally that we're going to want them. So you'll want your leftmost and rightmost positions to be defined visually. So I'm going to say that looks pretty good. I have about the same space between here and the edge and here and the edge. And I will select all of these. And the first thing I will do is align them vertically so their centers are vertically aligned. And then I'll go down to the distribute menu uh, item and choose distribute horizontally. That's the second item over. I click on that and it makes sure that they're each equidistant. That just makes them look better. Then I'll drag around them to select. I'll hold down the option key. I will make another row of these and since those are selected I can hold my shift key down arrow these a little bit and you can try to get them really closely lined up or you can just lay them out any way you like whatever makes things look the most interesting to you then I will go ahead and copy these to get my last set and I will hold down the option key over in the score and drag down to channel 11 so I'll have approximately 20 I guess I'll have exactly 20 sprites hold the shift key down move these down on the screen a bit and try to get these kind of lined up so they're pretty similar in spacing just so they look a little more interesting or uniform maybe more interesting is to have them not be uniform so it's really up to you so here's how I'm going to lay mine out and I'll go ahead and kinda of nudge them overall on the screen so they're occupying roughly the center of the screen okay and the first thing I need to do now is make sure that their ink effects are all set so that their backgrounds are transparent. This is because I'm using vector shapes. If you're using other bitmap artwork, you may not need to say background transparent for your sprites, but I want the white area around these to be completely transparent. So I will drag around all of these, and then under my sprite tab, I will make sure the ink is set to background transparent because I selected all of them they all get the same ink effect so that way as they get moved around from the animation that we'll create uh, with a few lines of lingo they won't put white over other sprites if they get moved 
The other thing I'll do, I'll select all these again, and I'm going to turn on the trails, which will allow each of these sprites to kind of act like paint brushes. And Director will not refresh the screen where the sprites were for each frame. And what it will do is kind of leave a print, an outline print of that piece of artwork from the previous frames and it will just keep drawing on top of the frames that have already been printed to the stage and it just makes your canvas kind of fill up with color very quickly and then to just offer some more interactive possibilities I'm going to check the movable box now of course you can set both of these with lingo but why do that if you can just click a couple of items so now I have the potential for these to be moved around as well as when they're moved to not cover up with their uh, white backgrounds anything that they're dragged over. So we're pretty much to the point now where we can actually do a little bit of lingo scripting. We need two behaviors in order for this to work correctly. The first behavior we will create is going to stop the playhead when it reaches a particular frame of the movie and I'm going to use my script channel, my frame script channel, and I'm going to double click on this. The, my options are many. I can double click, I can start typing with the frame selected, I can click on behaviors. I'll go ahead and just double click to, so you can see how that works. You just double click and here I am in a lingo editor. You can choose to use the JavaScript syntax if you're more comfortable with that. I'm just going to use lingo. I'm going to call this behavior hold frame and what we need to do is say to the movie object we're going to say go to the current frame that you're on indefinitely so this just makes it stay on whatever frame this script is on and I will click my lightning bolt to make sure that's compiled then I actually I won't close that I'll look and notice that the fourth cast member is now positioned up here and if I were to run my movie right now the playhead stays in one spot and each of these items can be moved around and the layering of each item is set up so that it will correspond to whatever channel they happen to be in so you're going to get each of these sprites to appear in the order they, they appear in the channels in the score so this is the beginning of what we'll get. We do have a little bit of interactivity in that people can drag these around, but we're going to be animating these, make them look a lot more interesting. So what we'll be doing is adding a script to each of these sprites, and it will be the same script. Once we create it, we'll just apply it to all the other ones, and we will then be able to have the animation apply to all of these. So I'm going to just call this move sprite. I like to name my behaviors. makes it easier to figure out which one is which if you get a more complicated movie going. And I'm going to change the keyword up here that says mouse up to exit frame. And what that will do is apply this behavior. This, this handler will get called 30 times per second which is going to drive our animation. And then what we need to do is talk to the particular sprite that we are dealing with in the channel this is attached to. And what this script so far will do is figure out whatever channel this sprite is in. So we don't have to hard code a number one or a number two or number five. It will figure out whatever channel it's in. And then the property that we're going to access, we use the period to tell the sprite which property we want to work with, we'll say is rotation. And we're going to copy what's on the left side of our equal sign now. And we're going to put it on the right side of the equal sign. And if we were to run the script right now, we'd get nothing happening because we're saying take your current rotation and set it to your current rotation. So what you have to do is change the value of it, what it's getting assigned on the right side of the equal sign here. And we're going to say set its rotation equal to its rotation plus 5 or something like that. These are going to be the number of degrees that your sprite will rotate at each time the frame is rendered. But for good practice, what we want to do is make sure that this value never goes past 360. Director is very forgiving. In fact, because these are 
in degrees, not radians, it's very easy to intuitively think of how it's going to move and how much each time. But just for a good coding practice, we will limit how big this value will get by using a modulo. And what we do for that is we put this in parentheses, then we type the word mod, and then we determine what limit we want to have for that. And mod, uh, you can look it up, but it essentially returns the remainder after division. And used this way, it's going to make sure that the number that gets assigned to rotation never exceeds the number 360. So if we were to do that and just run it right now, I will click the lightning bolt, we'll go to the score, and when I run this, it's going to spin around, but I, for some reason don't seem to have the trails on. Let me make sure the trails are turned on here. And we'll see how it looks with one of these. There it is. So you can see it's spinning around and not cleaning up after itself for each frame. So you get that interesting kind of a pinwheel effect. And then if we select all the sprites, I'll shift click on this one and attach the move sprite behavior to the rest of these. When I run this, I get a nice kind of uniform movement effect and I can actually drag these around and paint with them. So as they rotate, they leave behind whatever pixels covered up that part of the screen at that point in time, and you can get some very fun little patterns this way. With just a little bit more work, we can make this even more interesting by having it switch to, say, this triangle object each time one of these sprites is clicked. So let's go ahead and wire that up. We'll go into the behavior, and we're going to add a handler that works with the mouse up message. So we will say mouse up. Not able to type today, but we'll still get it to work just the same. Okay, so on mouse up me is the handler that you want. And what that's going to allow us to do is this behavior will then work with the mouse up. And what we want to do is take the sprites member property I'm going to copy this, paste this down here, and instead of rotation, it's going to be member. So the sprite's cast member is going to get changed. And we're just going to assign it the name of this cast member called triangle. And I don't have to capitalize the T. It's probably good practice to match your spelling and, and the case of the spelling with the items in your cast. But Director is extremely forgiving. It is not case sensitive. But if you like your triangle capitalized because it's capitalized down here, we'll do that. So I will then click the lightning bolt again to make sure it's compiled. And now, as this is running, I can drag these around. But each time I click a sprite, that particular sprite gets converted into a triangle. So you can have a lot of variety and interesting patterns that happen by just swapping the cast member from one thing to another. And you can make your behavior as complicated as you'd like and actually have it switch among a whole listing of these cast members. If you had 50 cast member pictures that you might want to draw from, it would be quite easy to make a handler that would just randomly select one of those and choose any of those cast members that might come up when you click on each sprite. So those are the basics of how you can get an interesting animated pattern using Adobe Director and a little bit of lingo.